This neat little folding box makes a great container for a special book or set of books. It's also perfect as a portfolio box holding separate images. The fact that one side is completely open once you open it up makes it very easy to get items in and out. Probably the most time-consuming part of the construction of this box is the preparation. You'll want to be very precise with the measurements of the book board, the paper, and the book cloth that you use. I've created two worksheets to help you work through the measurements of every piece that you will need to cut. You just need to understand some very basic fractional arithmetic to be able to complete these worksheets. Without figuring out the precise dimensions of each piece of the box, the construction will fail, so it's worth the time put in to complete these worksheets. They are available for download on my website, so you can print them out and create a perfect box for any size object you want. Go to handmadebooksandjournals.com, then choose the main menu item, Make Custom Books, then Boxes and Slipcases. From there, choose Clamshell Box, which will take you to the main page for that item. Here you can scroll down until you see the images of the worksheets. These each have separate download pages, so click on the first one, go to that download page, and download it from there. How you do that final step of downloading will depend on your operating system and the browser you're using. I'm on a Mac using Safari, so I control click on the image and get a pick menu allowing me to save image to the desktop. Your final step may vary. My hope is that these worksheets are self-explanatory, but if you want more detailed help with them, there's a video here showing how to go about filling these out. Once you have all of your pieces cut, you'll want to gather a few simple supplies, some waxed paper, and some PVA thick glue that you can get from any bookmaking supply house. The thick glue is particularly helpful when gluing the bookboard together as it holds the vertical panels in place. You'll also want a few scrap pieces of bookboard. Start with the top or bottom tray section and the appropriate side pieces. I'm starting here with a smaller tray, numbers 4, 5, and 6, but the process is the same for both the large and the small tray sections. Begin with the tray bottom and dab the thick glue along one long edge and both short edges. You want just the right amount of glue, which will be a bead that stands out a bit but is not globbed on. Not enough glue and the pieces won't firmly stick together. Too much glue and it gets very messy. Place this board on a piece of waxed paper. You should have glue on one long side and both short sides. Pick up one of the short sides, in this case piece number six, and apply glue to one of the short ends. Then attach this to one of the short sides of the tray bottom that you previously applied glue to, making sure that the short side you applied glue to is in the same orientation as the glue on the tray base. Press firmly to make sure it is adhered and staying in place. This is where the thick glue is very helpful. You don't have to hold it for very long for it to hold its position. Attach both short sides in this manner. Next, apply the long side, pressing firmly to make sure you're getting a solid connection between all of the pieces. Take your time at this point to get all of the sides lined up correctly with the base, making sure the sides are perpendicular to the bottom piece and aligned correctly with each other. Once all of the sides are attached and feel reasonably firm, take the entire piece off of the waxed paper. It's probably stuck to it a little and you don't want it to dry attached to that paper. Smooth down any glue on the outside that is seeped out. Replace the waxed paper with a clean piece and use the corner of a scrap piece of bookboard to clean up or smooth out the glue that seeps between the seams of the board on the inside. The goal here is to not allow it to dry in a chunky or beaded up state. Once you've cleaned up all the seams, go back to each part and make sure it is firmly attached in the correct orientation. Take your time to adjust the panels as this will impact the success of the overall box. Once you're sure everything is cleaned up, aligned, and firmly glued, Remove it from the wax paper and set that piece aside to dry. Follow these exact same procedures and complete the second tray. Once you have both trays completed, make sure they fit together correctly. There should be about one-eighth of an inch of space on each of the three enclosed sides to allow for covering the trays with paper, which will add a bit to the thickness of the sides. The next step is to create the lid for both trays. Before you start on this step, you might want to create a spacer to place between the board pieces and the spine. You don't have to do this, but it makes this part of the process a little easier. It's easy to make a spacer out of a few pieces of bookboard or mat board glued together to achieve the correct spacing. Start with the number 8 piece of bookboard, the spine, and the number 16 piece of book cloth. Apply regular PVA glue to one side of the spine and center it on the wrong side of the book cloth.
Next, you'll attach the lid pieces to the spine. Place the spine on a scrap piece of paper and apply glue to one side of the exposed book cloth. Remove the piece from the scrap paper and place it on a clean sheet. Insert the 3 16th inch spacer next to the spine board and align one of the lids to the glued book cloth. Once you have the board in place, remove the spacer so it doesn't get permanently glued down. Follow this same process for the other lid. Next, glue the head and tail flaps down. Be sure to use a clean piece of scrap paper for this. Press these flaps in place and use a bone folder to press the cloth down into the gutters. I use two bone folders to do this because if you just use one, it pulls the cloth up out of the other gutter. Turn the cover over and run the bone folder down both gutters. The goal here is to make sure both gutters get glued down. Next, apply glue to the inner hinge piece, the book cloth marked number 17. Carefully center it on the inside of the lid you just constructed. Press this down firmly and once again run a bone folder into the gutters to make sure those are glued down to the other piece of book cloth on the other side. I usually place a heavy weight on this piece while I get the next step ready. The last step for the lid is to attach the paper to both sides. Place one of the cover papers upside down on a piece of scrap paper, making note of its orientation if it has a directional pattern. Apply glue to the entire paper, making sure you get the edges. Don't get too generous with the glue along the edges, though. You don't want it squeezing out. Use regular PVA glue for this step, not the thick glue. Place the paper on the lid, leaving about one-eighth to one-quarter of an inch of the book cloth showing along the spine edge. Turn everything over and press firmly, making sure the paper is completely adhered to the board. Cut the corners at a 45 degree angle, leaving about 3 16 to 1 quarter inch of paper at the corner of the book board. You need enough paper there to cover the corner completely, but you don't want too much or it will leave a bulky lump. If you do all of this quickly enough, and depending on your environmental conditions, your glue might still be tacky. But you also might need to refresh the glue on the margins, as I am doing here. Fold both short edges over the board, making sure they are adhered to the board. Use a bone folder to smooth them down, and then use the bone folder to fold in the corner. This is a bit tricky, but take your time and get it right, as this is what will make or break the corners of your box. Do this to both corners, and then fold that flap up. Smooth everything down with the bone folder. Complete the other side exactly the same way and place this under weights to dry. Watch part two of this tutorial here to see how to finish your clamshell box.